Some good news for the African elephant now. China's announced a one-year ban on the import of all ivory carvings. In a brief statement on its website, the State Forestry Administration said it would halt administrative approval for the imports until February 26 next year. The agency said the move is to protect African elephants and the one-year time frame is designed to assess the effects. Now, ivory carvings and their sales are legal in China if the activities conform with certain regulations. Imports of ivory and its products must be permitted by the State Forestry Administration. According to the rules, raw elephant ivory and its products should be pro processed at designated places, sold at fixed shops and tracked on an individual item basis. Each legal ivory product can be tracked through a unique photo ID and is recorded in a database. All right, now let's get you more details on that ban. We're joined live from Beijing by CCTV's Grace Brown. Grace, can you give us more details on this year-long ban on imports and why has Beijing decided to implement it now? Well, as you say, the state administration announced the ban on its website on Thursday. It said it will not handle any ivory import requests for one year. Now, an unnamed forestry official told a state-run paper that they hope the ban will help to curb demand for tusks and protect elephants. It comes, of course, just days before Prince William's visit to China, the Duke of Cambridge being a strong critic of the ivory trade. And he will, during his stay, visit an elephant sanctuary in the southwestern province of Yunnan, home to some of China's last remaining elephants. It also follows criticism from animal rights groups in China and globally who say the ivory trade has fueled a surge of poaching in Africa. China has been taking more steps to change this recently. Last year, it destroyed more than six tons of ivory in southwestern China in what was the first public destruction of any ivory stockpile here. Courts in China have also been stepping up ivory prosecution. But according to the World Wildlife Fund, China is still the biggest end market for ivory in the world. Famida. Now, Grace, Beijing will also use this one-year period to assess the impact of this ban. How are they planning to effectively enforce it? It's, it's a good question. The Forestry Administration says it will halt all ivory imports into China. But the domestic trade could well be unaffected. Um, it, it makes no mention of the domestic trade of ivory here. So this could fuel illegal ivory smuggling into China instead. So far, there have been no further details as to how Chinese police will respond to this risk. The London-based Environmental Investigation Agency says that unless domestic trade is also banned, this ban is unlikely to make a big difference. In addition, the ban will only affect carvings acquired after 1975. Any carvings that are acquired before that or claiming to be acquired before that can still be brought into China this year. Now, Grace, considering the pitfalls of this ban, do we know yet what happens after the one year is up? Well, what the officials have been saying is that this, is, this temporary ban will allow them to assess the effectiveness of an ivory ban before they can take more concrete steps. China signed a pact banning global trade in ivory back in 1981, but it got an exemption in 2008 to buy 62 tons of ivory from several African countries. Now, the government releases a portion of that ivory to licensed ivory carving factories here. Ivory is still seen as a luxury in China, and many Chinese are still unaware that elephants are actually killed in the process of acquiring it. So it's unclear what will happen by this time next year, but it seems that regulating the domestic market will be critical. Back to you. All right, Grace, thanks very much for that information from Beijing. Grace Brown there. Well, certainly welcome news for African countries, and let's get you more on that ban now, I'm joined live in our Nairobi studios by Patrick Bergen, the CEO of the African Wildlife Foundation. Thanks for your time this afternoon. Now, Patrick, let's begin with this ban. What's your take on that development? Well, as you just said, I think it is great news for Africa and for African elephants. Um, this is a very thorny problem, the poaching crisis that we face. Africa 
has to take primary responsibility for solving the problem, but Africa cannot do it alone. We need the help of the Chinese government and the Chinese people to solve this problem. Uh, I was in China earlier this month. I'll be in China again next month for the Boao Forum on Asia. It's really very important that, uh, that China join hands with Africa to solve this problem. And so I think today the international conservation community is going to be really pleased to see that China is taking at least this step. Now we do see increasing cooperation between uh, China, which is a large consumer of ivory products, and, and African countries. To what extent do you think this ban will curb poaching on the continent? You know, I think there are a couple of things here. There are the specific elements of the ban, which products are covered for what period of time and so forth. Um, it might be hard to draw a very direct line between the specifics of the ban and a direct decrease in poaching. I think there's something much larger happening here, which is um, a message being sent by the government of China uh, to people that um, collecting ivory that might have been socially acceptable uh, many years in the past, in a time where there are many fewer people in the world and many more elephants in the world, um, maybe that was okay then, but times have changed. So again, I think there's a larger message here, and I think it's very positive. And the more we see uh, the Chinese government and the Chinese people take this step and help to recognize that there is a real problem here and that the consumption of ivory is driving it, um, we will, in fact, uh, turn the corner and see poaching uh, begin to go down. Now, of course, poaching numbers are, of course, still concerning. What more needs to be done to ensure that this practice is at least curbed, if, if not ended? Well, you're quite right. There's a lot to be done, and we think we have to address this problem at all levels. The way the international conservation community has been talking about is at three levels. To, to stop the killing, to, to protect elephants and rhinos and even lions and so forth in, in the field with greater protection. Then there's a need to stop the trafficking, and we need ports officials, customs officials, uh, airlines, shipping companies to all be aware of this problem and to try and help uh, shut down the trafficking of wildlife products and then to reduce the demand. And that's being done with things like public service announcements like uh, Jackie Chan and, um, and Li Bingbing uh, and, and Yao Ming have been doing in China, as well as you know, what we've just seen today now, this action by the Chinese government restricting the sale. If we do all these things together, um, I think there will be progress. We would like to see China do more. I hope, in fact, that the ban does get extended, uh, both in um, the time period cover and the sorts of ivory products covered, but, but today is a very good step. All right, Patrick, thanks very much for your time today. We're speaking there to Patrick Bergen, the CEO of the African Wildlife Foundation, speaking to him here in Nairobi.